Hey, what's up guys? Friday Egg here, and this is going to be a, a general starting starter uh, tutorial. It's going to be a couple parts because I don't want it to be too long-winded. Um, I'll have them all tied up together. Um, but when you first start playing Works Must Die Unchained, my, my recommendations to you are is to come into the game. Uh, you, you, can, you can actually do this without even logging in. Uh, there's one of the this uh, the game menu cog wheel is on the uh, the, the very beginning of the dashboard um, But click here and Go to go to run local test and we're gonna do this for a few reasons um, one is if you have any kind of uh, a Graphical issue with, with your with your computer um, Hardware and the game you'll find out about it um, by yourself opposed to uh, queuing up with ten people and then having the disconnect because you have a, a graphics problem. This game is still in beta, so that that, that, that can happen. It has happened to me um, in a couple uh, patches. Uh, more earlier alpha than now, but it has happened. So uh, go ahead and click this, and then I'll, I'll actually have to, I need to stop recording and start up again. Okay, we are in the local test. So I'm gonna give you guys a brief rundown of, ev of kind of everything uh, from here. And I'll do my best to explain it. Uh, like I said, I'm going to break this up into a couple parts. Um, so it doesn't get too long-winded uh, as one video. Because each thing kind of kind of, kind of of needs its, uh, a, a, a good amount of uh, explanation. Real quick overview. This is our... My team's rift. Our job is to defend this. To stop enemy minions from getting into that rift. And uh, we'll, the blue... Up top, you see uh, blue, a blue star. That's actually a blue rift, and then 20 points, uh, uh, the game timer, and then 20 points, and the red, the red, uh, red rift, which is the t other team's uh, rift points. So our job is to defend our rift points and to take away theirs. So here's our starting area. All the players will spawn along this little uh, balcony here. Uh, here's our rift. Here's our rift room. It's guarded by two gates on either side and three paladins. Um, gates are something we'll touch on very quickly to um, just to show you. Um, you can open and close them. They do have a cooldown between when you can close them. You can't close them if there's a minion standing right here or an enemy hero. But one of the most important things about these gates is if you are going to go uh, through one of them, close it behind you. Okay. Never leave your gates open. But these gates especially because uh, enemy minion like uh, fast minions like kobolds or satyrs can easily run by your paladins and get easy score um, points scored for the air team. And you don't want that. So very first thing we're going to do now that we're in the game is we're going to run to our war camp that is open but it needs minion cards to be played at. So... Um, in this case, it's not a great example because it's actually already upgraded to level 4. But what it's going to look like is you're going to see five empty minion card slots, one for each player. And you're going to see the level 1 tab selected by default. And you need to play one of... Uh, I think the default deck will have uh, you know one or two um, minion cards for you to play. They're free. They don't cost any leadership, which is this currency here, the Fist. Um, and you're going to click it, hit Accept... And then you are going to have a thousand leadership left, and you will want to upgrade this towards level two. Okay, and every one of your team will do that, unless you have a different plan to maybe open the other other uh, war camp uh, earlier than later. Okay, um, so while we're on war camps, we're going to talk leadership. All right, so. Basically, the war camps run off of the currency that is leadership. Which, if you look down at my my uh, my my war mages uh, icon next to my loadout bar, you'll see the uh, the gauntlet fist, the armored fist right there. I have thirteen thousand two hundred. Or now I just went up a little bit. That's how much leadership I have. You see it. You see it uh, going up. Um, leadership is used for two things. Well, it's used. It's used for Everything to do with minions. So, uh, opening war camps, uh, upgrading war camps, and also playing glyphs on glyph locations. Okay? Which we'll talk about in a second. So, 
Um, here's what it's, here's what it's going to look like. Uh, as your with these minions, as your team gains more leadership from uh, moving, you gain leadership by moving minions into the enemy base. Um, you the long the, they just changed the mechanic today, so you basically you need to have heroes marching along with the minions to gain leadership from them. So as you can see, now that I'm standing by them, um, you see leadership ticking off of them. That's because I'm with them. If I move away, um, that's not dropping off because I think I'm in the local test. Or it may have now worn off, that I, but as soon as I get back near them, you should see it start, um, yeah, see the leadership's ticking off of them again. So your job as, 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 uh, as heroes is to escort your minions through their, this is going to be where their kill box is, through their base, through their gates, and into the rift. So the, as long as you have heroes marching along with your minions, they're going to be earning you leadership. And you actually get more leadership for each additional ch hero escorting your minions. Uh, I think the I think the, the bonus caps at 80% um, with three heroes there. So... Up to three heroes is the max you you want you um you need to have for the max bonus. Anything after that, um, it falls off and you don't get anything extra. Um, but as you can see here, me being here is making them give us points. Um, so that's how you earn leadership. You also earn leadership from hero kills, le leadership and coin from c killing enemy heroes. So what you're going going to be doing is in between waves, during waves. You're going to be visiting the war camp, upgrading it to, to get to the next level of card. So let's just pretend I upgrade level 2, playing that card, upgrading it further. Um, you're going to be using it to use leadership points to drop glyphs onto glyph locations. And you're also going to be using it to open up your other war camps, which I'm going to do right now. So... Um, it costs a thousand per little tick. Uh, you know, each member of your team is going to be coming over here, pumping this thing up, pumping it up, pumping it up, pumping it up until it's open. Then everyone's going to need to come back over here as fast as they can and play their their first level minion cards. Uh, one, I, that's mine. It has my name there. It shows what card I play. It'll just do the same thing for each of the other players on my team. Uh, one thing to note, um, as you can see, you can't see the uh, the wave counter when you're in the uh the war camp screen but uh if you let's just say we went to level two which i didn't so let's do it i'm gonna go to level two all right let's take a look here so the next wave starts in 12 seconds i have until right at one second to click accept and those level two minions are going to come out of here if i try now to play these guys and hit accept it's too late the human human warrior guys already came out because i i put the other ones in too late same thing with this glyph i tried to glyph them but they need to walk over this to get that buff so i'm too late um that is leadership in a nutshell um like i said uh just to wrap things up your leadership is for Opening war camps, upgrading war camps, actually spending your leadership to play certain leadership cards. Um, I only have this this one level three card in this uh, this this test game um, deck, uh, but certain cards cost more, cost less. Um, you do have to spend your leadership to play those cards. You use it to put glyphs on your glyph locations. If I want to change this, I could do it. I could sell this glyph and put a different one if I want to. All that kind of stuff. That's your leadership currency. Um, yeah, so that's leadership 101. Next thing we're going to talk about is coin. So, um, yeah. Uh, we're, we're actually just going to run through it. This needs to be all said in one video. I'm, I'm sorry for, uh, <laughs> for saying we weren't going to talk about... Uh, everything in one video but we need to just because this is all important stuff you need to know so that should have given you a general overview of leadership so 
Let's use my, my teleportation ring. Let's pretend the game just started. So we're going to make a mad dash for our war camp. All right. Player level one minions. Put a point into upgrading into level two. Then we're immediately going to run over to our defense lane that we're defending. And we need to put as many traps down as we can based off how many coins we have. So you're going to have very little coin. I think a thousand when you first start. So each person might be able to put down one or two traps. But each person in your team is going to need to put traps down here to give your, give your defenders um, as much of a kill box as they can to help defend. To stop these minions from marching onto your rift. Okay? So everyone plays traps. And just like... Just like leadership, where you're trying to spend leadership in between waves, uh, in between waves of minions, you're going to keep revisiting whichever la defense lanes need traps and trapping as much as you can to help with that defense, okay? Um, so it's kind of the game within the game. Uh, so you're, you're, you're doing all, you're doing this, uh, the, the trap, the trap, uh, the trap purchasing, Sometimes if you want to, you have a better trap and you want to put it down, you have to sell, then put down the better traps. So you're doing all this in between waves, in between hero attacks, and that's the first way you spend your coin. The second way you spend your coin is you have a finite amount of traps you can actually put down, okay? So uh, on this three two-lane map, you can only put down... You can only put down... Uh, 13 traps, okay? So, 13 traps are down. You see that little icon? Red red bear trap. No more traps for you. Now, what that means is your extra coin uh, can be used for one of two things. You, you, if you, As you get more and more coin, if you want to put down more expensive traps, you can sell cheaper ones and lay them down. So, uh, like arrow walls are 600. I could sell those and put down brimstones if I wanted to. The other thing you do is uh, once you have weavers available to you from getting, uh, getting getting weavers in card packs and unlocking the weaver slot in your deck, you can then play weavers and uh, upgrade your hero. Which I should it's just uh, this upgrades your hero, upgrades your traps, upgrades a lot of different things. Um, each weaver, there's four right now. They do they all do different things, and the upgrades cost you coin. Very similar to Orcs Must Die. They, in Orcs Must Die, they cost you coins. So, that is how the Weavers work. If you want extra mana, you would click this, buy upgrade. It deducts the coin from your coin amount, and then your character's that much stronger. My, my uh, War Mage has a little bit more mana now than he did before. So, that is the other side of the, uh, the coin spending and what the coins are for. Um, the next thing I want to talk on real fast is... Um, trapping since we were on coins so uh, since we're doing a local test here the other team hasn't done anything because they can't and my minions are moving through freely through what would be their secondary kill box which would start here but since the computer's not trying to defend uh, there's no kill box here but this is where they would put the secondary kill box I will show you guys um with our our area where it would be, it would st they would start here, closest to the rift, and it would go down all along this lane until you got to down here. And this is where the primary spot of your kill box, secondary kill box, would be if they opened up their their war camp, which is there. That's their war camp. They would open up on this map, and then the minions would march down this lane, first getting to this gate. And then this area. So you can start putting traps all down here. And defending against the minions as they march down this lane towards your rift. So that's the last thing I want to talk about with traps and coin. The next thing I want to talk about is the gates. Uh, I'm going to have to restart to uh, get back to that point. So I'll be right back. Alright guys. This is the part where I want to talk about gates specifically um so match just started as we've already talked about you're gonna come play your level one minions 
put a put a put a point into upgrading to level two. You're going to run over to your 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 defense lane that you need to defend. Closing the gates behind you and your or letting your teammate, last teammate in, close the gate behind you. Uh, put down your one or two traps. And now we're gonna look at this gate and talk about gates. So gates are obvi obviously from looking at a gate and knowing their functions, uh, both now and in for thousands of years, gates are made to keep things out. Or, in some cases, offensively keep things in. So, initially your gates will keep them out. You can use that to uh, maybe build up a little bit more, f a little bit of flow control. If I want to, say, not have my traps only hit the first couple guys and hit, like, a, a good, maybe as many, as many initial minions as I can. Before it's dead, I'm going to open it. And now I have a much larger influx of minions that are going to get affected by my my first traps um so defensively with minions that's one way it can be used but it's not really that good because then you lose your door a lot faster but offensively if a an enemy hero was kind of stupid and brazen and ran in here you could close the gate on him trapping him in this area okay um also this trap this this gate over here you want to keep that as live as long as you can but so offensively, um, on this map it's not as dire. But other the, the three lane map, these two gates will completely trap a hero with you and your paladin and all your traps. Uh, the, the three lane map does not have this this out here where they can get back to their base. Um, so you can use these enemy gates for heroes that are too bold and brazen. Run into the kill box, and they jump in. They're all crazy. You lock you lock you shut this gate on them. This one's already shut. They have to then try to escape. They have to run all this way through all your traps. You're hitting them. You're hitting them. Um, your paladin's over here then. Your paladin starts hitting them. You're shooting them. They have to try to run away this way. And chances are you're going to get an easy kill on them. All right? So uh, gates are very important that way. And like I said, back at the base, gates are very important for if you're going to run out this lane, make sure you close it because those, those runners will easily... Since they're so fast, they will run by your paladins. Your paladins will swing and miss at them a lot of times. And those enemy minions will run into your rift and score easy points just because your gate was open. So, um, that is pretty much it for the um, super, super, uh, you know, truncated and, and short version that I could get for how to get you guys started. Um, I'm going to do another tutorial along the lines of this i'm gonna i'm gonna do it in a live match uh eventually i'm gonna have that i'll have that linked in an annotation in this video because i haven't actually done it yet but i plan on doing it but uh oh well, well before i'm done um i'm sorry for not bringing it up yet uh, i'm gonna talk about paladins real quick um as i they're a pretty integral part of the game so your paladins are very near and dear to you um they are very strong defenders they hit like trucks against minions and enemy heroes. And as you can see, as I'm standing next to it, you can see this uh, right above my E my E skill icon. You see a, a paladin helm with a blue uh, like a blue aura around it icon. That's the paladin healing me and regening my mana as I'm standing next to him. As you can see, that buff is making my mana regen very fast. As I walk away from him, that aura drops off for me because it has a, a area of effect range. To so get back close to him, it's there. So. As, as a defender, whether you're in combat or out of combat, you gain this Paladin uh, buff, which is helping you regenerate health. Um, as you can see, he takes a lot of damage, but he he, he heals himself, but once he once they kill him, he's dead. And they, they get 5,000, I think, leadership and coin for killing the Paladin. So that's a big, big um, boost, uh, economic boost to the other team that you want to avoid at all costs. And then you lose your, your defender right here, which is helping to keep your mana and your health topped off as a defender. So, Paladins are a very integral part on defense. And on offense, uh, they're the exact inverse. You want to kill them as fast as possible. Um, uh, we'll use our Paladin as a demo since their Paladins aren't there right now. Uh, real quick, 
if you're a ranged character, you cannot do this on a un, un, You cannot do um, unattested attacks on paladins. Uh, they instituted like a, a bolt attack where if you start shooting him as a ranged character and he can't get to you, he will basically smite you down with like a, a bolt attack and you just die. So the only way you can attack him is with either a straight up melee, which he'll whip your ass, or you attack him while minions are attacking him. Um, it'll take a lot of minions, but they can down a paladin, and the m player characters helping to down the paladin will help it die that much faster, and it's recommended. So, um, in a nutshell, paladins, you want to keep yours alive because they heal you, they regen your mana, and they deny, um, they defend, they keep, they kill minions from moving through down the lane, and by letting the enemy kill them, the enemy will get a big economic boost. So, and then offensively, the inverse of that, you want to deny your your the other team of all those good things. So that's why you want to kill them as fast as possible. Oh, doorbell. Um, dog might start barking. But that's Paladins in a nutshell, um, and that's this tutorial in a nutshell. Especially that Roscoe's barking. Um, hush. Sorry about that, guys. Um. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. That should get you guys on the ground and running. And like I said, I will annotate soon for a a, uh, a live version of this tutorial, which will be a lot more hectic, and I won't be able to explain things as well. Oh, um, I didn't even talk about coins. Damn it. Uh, we'll touch on that again. Coins. You earn coins by killing enemy heroes you do i believe you get a coin bonus and the main way you get coins is from killing enemy minions as you, all those little ticks coming off of there are coins i'm earning so you earn more coins by getting combos and that is how you earn coins is by killing enemy minions um the the coins and the leadership are globally distributed unless you're getting coins and leadership from killing a hero like right now all these uh all these coins you're seeing getting uh put out in the air that's being distributed globally to your entire team uh it's not on an individual basis unlike uh games that are sim maybe somewhat similar and like a moba world where you have to get you you yourself have to get the last hit to get the gold or coin from it in this game all the minions killed here by other by heroes or your or your kill box that were comboed on, that coin is distributed equally to everyone on your team, so no one has to be here worrying about killing minions. You can be on offense completely content without having to worry about coins, just like the people on defense don't have to worry about being on offense to get that leadership. So that wraps up this. I explained everything, even though it wasn't as best as it could be. Um, I'm going to have to redo this again, I'm sure, as the game is going to continue to be um, patched and things are going to change. But for now, this has been the current state and the things you need to know to get started. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the live, a lot more hectic tutorial when I do it. And uh, please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitch for Horse Must Die Unchained streams. And I'll talk to you guys soon. See ya.